Hello everybody and welcome to another weekly update from me, Martin. Uh, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. And uh, this week we have been doing a bit of shepherding to get the release out the door. Uh, but before we get into the de details for that, um, I want to give a big shout, shout out and a big thank you to all of my sponsors who pay for my time to work on Inkscape. Um, thank you so much for the help that you give uh, the consistently month to month. Um, it means so much to be able to commit the time necessary to actually make Inkscape better. So uh, let's get into the actual details of what we were up to. Um, I figured that like a lot of the, the tasks that are necessary to make a release of an open source pro pro project are kind of boring. And um, I was trying to think about like ways of explaining it perhaps to you guys so that uh, it make it a little bit more interesting. And uh, so for an example, <clears throat> one of the tasks that I've been doing this week is uh, shepherding the, uh, the fixes that have been committed since the beta, right? So when the beta happened, um, the project split or forked into two separate Inkscapes, right? You had the master branch or trunk branch, which continued to be developed and fixes kept on being applied to it. And then you had the 1.2.x uh, branch, which is the branch that will be released. And uh, what happens is, of course, is that a lot of the fixes that get applied to master should then be applied to 1.2 to make sure that those fixes can go across. They have to be carefully vetted to make sure that those fixes don't, won't disrupt things. They're not high risk. Um, and also that they're important enough to um, to take the risk because it's always risky whenever you start com committing stuff because people won't have had a chance to actually test uh, the like the, the beta plus these fi fixes if that makes sense. So what what we do is we create uh, these these uh, merge requests which are basically cherry picking right where you cherry pick the fixes into the um, new version. And uh, first of all, you have to make sure that it that the uh, the uh, the um, fixes apply cleanly, so that the code actually fi fits inside of whatever it, it, the the differences that have happened since. Um, and then you just have to make sure that you're testing the the fix to make sure that like nothing bad has happened since, and obviously that it compiles. Um, and so far, we've got about thirty or so back backports. Um, and what we do is we track all of the back the, the backports. All of them are tagged as backport proposed. Nathan will uh, often uh, recommend whether a fix should, you know, it, it looks like it's low risk. Uh, I will also look at whether it's low, low risk. Uh, other developers will see, like, if they think it's a back, back port proposed. And then once it's tagged, uh, I've then been taking those tagged branches and then bringing, cherry picking them into uh, the 1.2, right, to get more and more fi fixes in. And then once I've collected them, I, I, I've, been, I've been merging them all in one go. Uh, I did that twice this week uh, with two different sets of, of fi fixes. Um, but it looks like we're on schedule to do the uh, release can candidate this weekend with all of those fi fixes that have been back port ported this week. And then uh, the 13th is the penciled in date that the uh, the Vectors team, the, the announcement team, want to make the actual release. The release can candidate that happens tomorrow is probably like the final thing. Um, but obviously, you want a bit of time uh, to make sure there's no like absolutely critical pro pro problems that happen in the meantime. There probably won't be any fixes after this weekend, um, unless, of course, it's really, really cr critical. Um, so I did actually, though, also get in a fix. So there's this thing that I did last year with the with the text tool. Was it last year or was it the year before last? Um, it's called text padding and text mar margin and allows you to create uh, flowed text that um, can go inside of shapes, but then go inside of shapes with an extra bit of padding. And unfortunately, the padding calculation was not correct. The shape that it created to flow the text into had all of these like weird geometric jaggeds if you created a uh, text flow with large padding. And um, this is just a, uh, the implementation was incorrect. And unfortunately, it took me quite a long time to figure out what the correct implementation was. I actually, <laughs> I created about four different patches that I then scrapped. I was like, nope, this isn't this isn't functioning. 
Um, but eventually I got it to work and actually uh, that was backport proposed and merged into 1.2. Mostly because I wanted to get it in because um, the geometric uh, problems with the float, float text would have created inconsistencies with re rendering. So like if you'd had created a piece of float text with padding in 1.2 and then open that same SVG in 1.3 in the future with that fix, there would have been differences, right? Because it would have generated the padding shape differently. Um, so I thought it was important to make sure for consistency sake that people were c capable of making SVGs that didn't change or like w how the, the text was actually laid out. Especially like subtle things like you've 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 shaped it so that the the text exactly fits it in a specific space, and then some programmer comes along and changes the the calculations subtly, and now the the very last word just disappears, right off the end, and uh, you don't notice, of course, because like you're not checking for that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it only comes up later. And then you're like, oh my God, why did Inkscape like destroy this like one word at the end? Um, okay, so that's about what I've been up to this week. Next week, I'm going to be obviously focusing on the release and then I get to take some time off. That's my plan. Um, the, the Inkscape project itself has basically been gearing up for uh, making the release video, making, um, you know, just announcements and stuff. Uh, one of the things that I had to do this week was clear music rights, which was a task that I didn't expect to have to do, but essentially the, the media team had accidentally chosen a piece of music for the release of the video, which did not have a Creative Commons license that was uh, compatible. So I had to negotiate with the music artist who was very kind and uh, discuss a price for um, releasing that music as Creative com com Commons. Um, so that was fine, managed to sort that out. Um, just a bit of like, he, the, the, the artist was, was gonna go on vacation, I had to make a very quick decision, so I actually paid for it out of pocket myself. Uh, but I'm not bothered about that at all, because it, it, it wasn't actually that much money. Um, but it's it's just it's just like all these little things to make sure that stuff lines up, uh, and and with licensing, everybody out there who creates artwork, please please pay attention to licensing. It is so important. Uh, if you intend for works to be reused, uh, use the correct licensing, um, even if it takes a bit of extra reading of the terms. Uh, non derivative. Licensing terms are pretty much bad news because they extinguish lots and lots of use case cases that you may you may intend that some someone downstream can use, but they ca they can't. Um, okay, so that's about it for this week. Um, thank you all very very much for watching, and um, I'll see you all next week.